Hedge funds are large financial institutional investors who pool in money from different investors and collectively invest this money into different asset classes like equities, foreign exchange, bonds, convertible securities, etc. They do a thorough and comprehensive research of both financial and fundamental analysis as well as technical analysis of equities, bonds, government securities, foreign exchange, and then decide whether to invest in different assets, in different currencies, in different markets. And that is a most important decision of the hedge fund manager. So if you're interested in a career in fund accounting, you need to know what is the measures of performance of a hedge fund. If someone tells you in life size doesn't matter, it's perhaps true in many other cases, but it is absolutely untrue in the case of a hedge fund. In a hedge fund, size does matter. The bigger the hedge fund, the greater is the assets under the management and therefore the hedge fund can charge a higher amount of fees. In fact, the size of the hedge fund itself is a performance matrix. It's a performance measure for determining what are the kind of fees that investors need to pay the hedge fund manager. Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to look at AUM calculations. AUM standing for assets under management, which are useful for people working in fund accounting, as well as people who are looking for a career in fund accounting, as well as investment banking. On a personal level, it will also help you evaluate your mutual fund portfolio and decide what are the funds that you should stay invested in. In my YouTube channel, I cover everything about global markets, specifically focused on operations, processes and regulations, not anything much on trading. We cover markets of the United States, European Union, Australia, Singapore, and of course the Indian markets as well in four dimensions. That is the trade life cycle, fund accounting, OTC derivatives, and custodian operations. A very happy day to all of you and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm your learning partner, Sushila Hariharan. Let's take a look at what is AUM, assets under management of a hedge fund. Okay, so in a hedge fund, the AUM is slightly different from that of a mutual fund. So investors invest into a hedge fund. I've already uploaded a video on what is a hedge fund and who are the investors that can invest in a hedge fund. Can any investor put money into a hedge fund? If you think the answer is yes, then please take a look at the video, the link of which is shared in the comment section below to know that only accredited investors can invest into a hedge fund. SEC and FINRA both regulators in the United States capital markets have defined what is an accredited investor. They say that every hedge fund should decide for itself what are the qualifying criteria for an accredited investor and only accredited investors who are having at least a million dollars to invest should invest in hedge funds so that they understand the risk perspective of how the hedge funds operate and the asset classes that they invest in. Accredited investors are those who have at least a capital of $500,000 to invest into the hedge fund. This qualifying criteria varies from hedge fund to hedge fund and doesn't stay the same across all hedge funds. But before investing into the hedge fund, the investor should be accredited by the hedge fund itself so that they can invest. So there are two qualifying criteria for getting the accreditation. One is the income levels, that's the salary levels, and second is how much is the investment that they're going to make into the hedge fund. So only accredited investors can invest into the hedge fund. Now let's take a look at what does the hedge fund do with all this money? There are multiple investors who have got the accreditation, who meet the qualifying criteria given by the hedge fund, and then they invest into the hedge fund. The hedge fund then creates a pool of these investor contributions. This pooling is a very important concept to understand. Okay, this pool means that the money now has become mixed up, jumbled. Okay, and this money is then invested across different asset classes. So in today's video, we're going to look at five different AUM calculations so that we understand what is the meaning of AUM. Before jumping into understanding what is NAV, it is very important to understand how you calculate AUM. What do we mean by pooling? Okay, 
So this is a big difference between portfolio management and hedge fund management. In hedge fund management, there is a pooling of funds. In portfolio management, it's only funds under administration. So there are assets under administration, which custodians take up. Okay, but this is assets under management, which hedge funds take up. Let's take a look at the first calculation. So if you want to get your pen and paper and or open up an Excel sheet and start doing out the workings, it is very important to understand what is the meaning of the pool. On this table, we have classified across two rows, investor and investment. We have different investors. Since I was very unimaginative, I used the names of constellations. The first one is Orion Investor, who has made an investment of $50 million into the hedge fund. The second one is Andromeda, who has made an investment of $100 million into the hedge fund. Look at the sizes that I'm talking about. So size does matter, okay? Hercules is another investor who has invested $50 million. These investors could be investment firms themselves, okay? There could be other institutional investors as well. They need not necessarily be individuals. So with Orion's contribution of 50 million, Andromeda's contribution of 100 million, and Hercules' contribution of 50 million dollars, the total pool that the hedge fund has is a summation of these three investments into the hedge fund, that is 200 million dollars. Okay, so the first step in calculation of AUM is knowing what is the pool of funds that is available. Because this pool is what the hedge fund manager has, to invest in the markets. If we take a look at the second aspect of pooling, the pooled funds are then invested in different financial instruments. These include equities, derivatives, commodities, foreign exchange, bonds, convertibles, etc. Assets under management is the total value of these investments. What do I mean by value? The market value of these investments. So first we understood who are accredited investors, then we understood the concept of pooling. I have already made separate videos on these two concepts which I have uploaded before. I will again share the links of these two here. And third we now look at what is the meaning of AUM or assets under management. For this let's take the same example and move it forward. Okay. On a second scenario the hedge fund has invested across different assets in the following proportions. The investment made in equities is $150 million, in convertible securities is $40 million, cash balances is $10 million. Because hedge funds are secretive in operations, there is no regulation with respect to how we value the hedge fund. So hedge fund assets under management are valued by the hedge fund following best practices in the hedge fund industry and guidance given by accounting firms like KPMG and Deloitte. So the AUM at the start of the investment cycle is a summation of these three asset classes. That is 150 million equities, 40, 40 million convertible securities and 10 million cash. So the total AUM is 200 million dollars. Alright, so the hedge fund has got a pool of 200 million dollars it has invested this in $200 million. This is a very simplistic scenario. In reality, there would be time gaps between all the investments. It's not that the fund gets all the money on one day and invests everything on the very next day. Okay. Therefore, we have to consider cash as part of the investment. All right. So now we have the, that the main reason why we are calculating cash as a part of assets under management is because this money is not yet invested. It belongs to the pool, it comes from the pool, but it is not yet invested. Okay, so therefore we have to include AUM because this question came up to me a couple of times by participants. Should we include cash? Yes, we must include cash because of the fact that this cash is just on that particular date happens to be idle cash. Okay, it is not yet invested because it's a part of the pool. So the pool of funds was $200 million, the AUM at the start is $200 million. Let's now take a look at AUM, assets under management. Do you think that the assets under management change from time to time or is it static? Now that the hedge fund has you know, collected $200 million, 
it has invested 200 million dollars will it remain the same for the rest of the fund duration yes <laughs> it changes from time to time no it does not stay constant it will obviously change from time to time and what do you think are the three factors that contribute to change the first one is the market performance the second one is dividends and coupons received and the third one is inflows and outflows from the fund after the lock in period so the assets under management will change from time to time if the assets under management change let us take a look at the three scenarios in which they could change the first scenario so this is the same example which we are carrying forward to third example okay because you have to know the math behind this so from the same 200 million dollars which was invested as a part of the pool the value at the beginning of the year was 200 million dollars let's say at the end during the year the fund was super successful and in the end of the year they calculated the returns on the you know in pooled investments uh, the pooled funds i'm sorry the returns was 10 percent per annum okay nothing is mentioned it's automatically per annum i did not reiterate it the returns on the fund is 200 million dollars multiplied by 10 percent that gives us returns of 20 million dollars okay so the third fund third aspect of the returns on the fund is that there will be 20 million dollars which the fund has earned during the year now what does the fund do with this earnings okay most of the time in fact almost all the time if this is the case in the very first year itself the returns on the fund is reinvested back into the fund and therefore the assets under management at the end of year one is 200 million plus 20 million which gives us the AUM at the end of year one as 220 million dollars is this clear so remember this this returns on the fund is almost always put back into the fund into that pool and from that pool again investments are made so that the value of the marketable securities continues to be high and this is now standing at 10 percent higher than what we began the year at so the AUM at the end of year one is 220 million dollars the assumption here what is the assumption here simple question what's the assumption here what do you think what is the assumption over here the assumption over here is all the money is invested on the same day the profits are calculated only at the end of the year and only at the end of the year the money is invested etc etc so there are some time gap assumptions and this is more a dynamic flow compared to the static in which I have displayed. But for us, we have to understand this concept of calculation of AUM. AUM is not the pool of funds. AUM is the value of the marketable securities or the value of the investments that the fund has made. Okay, that is very important. I have often come across people who have said that AUM is the value of the pooled funds. No, it is not the value of the pooled funds. It's the value of the investments. Because that is the meaning of assets under management, right? The fund manager is managing the assets. So assets under management is not the pooling of funds. It's the assets that have been bought with those pools of funds. Let's take a look at, can AUM decrease? <laughs> okay, we first saw a situation where we have to always show the rosy picture first, right? AUM has increased. So can AUM decrease? Of course it can decrease. So let's take a look at how AUM decreases in our fourth working over here. Over here, we'll continue with the same example. At the end of year one, the value of the AUM was $220 million. So the fund manager begins year two with a AUM of $220 million. The returns on the fund in the second year because of all the geopolitical crisis etc that's happened in the last one year has decreased by 5%. The returns on the fund is a negative 11 million dollars. So the AUM at the end of year 2 is 220 minus 11 million that gives us 
the AUM at the year end of year 2 as 209 million. So not only can AUMs increase, AUMs can also decrease depending upon the market performance of the fund. So in the first case we saw how 200 million grew to 220 million. In the second case we are seeing how 220 million has come down by 11 million to 209 million. What about the dividends that are earned by the hedge fund? Okay, hedge funds have large holdings in equities and many of these equities give dividends to their shareholders. So investors earn dividends on equities. Most of the time, the dividends that are earned by the hedge fund are reinvestment, are reinvested fully, completely back into the hedge fund. Okay. The dividends earned by the hedge fund are reinvested back into the hedge fund. Let's take a look. What is the impact on the AUM? The impact on the AUM is the AUM decreases or does the AUM increase? What do you think? If the dividends earned by the hedge fund are reinvested back into the hedge fund, what is the impact? Will the uh, dividends increase or decrease? Let's take a look. Work it out with your Excel sheet. So let's continue with the same story. The value of the hedge fund at the beginning of year 2 was $220 million. The dividends earned was $5 million because that is the kind of dividend yields nowadays we uh, see. The dividends that are earned are fully invested back into the hedge fund. So the, the dividends earned was $5 million. The dividends reinvested was $5 million. The AUM at the end of the year is $220 million plus $5 million. Because dividends has been reinvested, the AUM at the end of the year is $225 million. So in this example, we have seen that fund managers, especially hedge fund managers, have no incentive to pay out dividends, to pay out the dividends, dividends that they have earned, but they would rather reinvest it because the assets under management that they are handling increases dramatically. Is the AUM important as a performance measure yes if the previous year's AUM has increased then it is a big positive size size does matter in the hedge fund industry people want to invest into a large fund because they think that those investors who have already invested have made a lot of money and therefore fresh investments will increase into the same hedge fund the logic is that size will always improve the performance of the hedge fund. Fresh investments into the hedge fund increase and more assets are there to invest. The hedge fund manager now becomes like a demigod because he is able to get more and more money to invest across asset classes. This is a positive sign for the hedge fund and the hedge fund manager works very hard towards increasing the AUM not only through marketing and sales skills but also through significant asset allocation strategies. AUM is very important for the hedge fund manager because it's a performance measure. Static management fees, which is almost 2% nowadays, I've already uploaded a video on hedge fund fees, the link of which is shared below. The management fees is typically 2% of the AUM. Even if dividend is reinvested and because of that, the AUM has increased, management fees is paid on the higher amount. So 2% of AUM is very, very high amount considering some of the funds like BlackRock, etc. are almost $9 trillion as assets under management. The management fees can run into billions of dollars every year. And of course, the performance fees is also a... a a function, uh, an important criteria for understanding the AUM. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like the content, please post it in the comments box. Thank you to all my subscribers for liking my videos and uh, please stay updated on fund accounting because that's what we will cover in my channel on global markets, operations, regulations and processes. Thank you so much. This is Sushila Hariharan wishing you a great day ahead.